let's talk about drag queens. So today I'm gonna talk about some drag queen history and how it relates to fashion. It's not personal, it's drag. Welcome to my channel! Drag queens are the most underrated fashion influencers. They have been fighting for decades just for the right to wear dresses or what is considered women's clothing. Why is this even an issue? Why are people so bothered with what others are wearing? I'll never understand. The term drag started in theater to describe a man dressed as a woman since women weren't allowed to perform in plays at the time. And what exactly is my secret? I'm a man. So the man or dresses to play female characters. It is believed that the term comes from the way the dresses dragged around the stage floor. The first well-known drag queen was Dorit Elton in 1911, who is referred as one of the greatest female impersonators in history for his role in The Fascinating Widow. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here I am back in Hollywood making my first talking picture. When homosexuality was outlawed, men who were cross-dressing started to do it in secret and in underground drag places. 50s, 60s, when uh, it was illegal to be homosexual, yep. they had a gay hanky code, the underground system of communication, and lavender uh, meant drag queen. These underground clubs started to pop up in major cities. Party! Where men could drink illegal alcohol, wear dresses, and be free to express their homosexuality. Let's get sick! In the 1920s and early 30s, the surge of drag clubs was so high, it became known as the pansy craze. When gay subculture became mainstream, prohibition was a big part of it. Even though many disapproved of LGBTQ rights, they didn't mind their parties and their delicious drinks. If I have something to say about you, Nina, I say it to you. You know I love you and you know I keep it real. So these underground clubs kept growing until the 50s, when law enforcement shut them down. But drag queens are so resilient, they never give up on their right of wearing dresses. I'm wearing Alexander McQueen, thank no. you. Patricia Field, Yves Saint Laurent. This is the Westwood. This is Mackie too. So that was when drag balls began. Drag queens could partner with houses for support and shelter, and that's how they started their own community and their drag families, with people who love to be creative with their outfits. In the 60s, Flawless Sabrina was a pioneer for the drag queen and transgender community. Okay, so the more light you have, the more shade. She organized multiple drag queen pageants across the US, was arrested multiple times, and appeared in talk shows, which was really new at the time. Parallel to Sabrina's work, drag queens began to protest against unfair police treatment. The peak was at the Stonewall Riot, which lasted for six days. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. have started the LGBTQ movement in the US. Since then, famous drag queens have been on the rise in TVs and movies. Like Dame Edna, Divine from Pink Flamingos, Freddy from the Horror Picture Show, Hairspray, Tootsie, Priscilla, who has been my favorite and I think is the first drag queen I was actually obsessed with. You actually make money by dressing up like a woman? Oh, sure. You can make a fine living in a pair of heels. <laughs> where a new phase of drag queens began and we discovered our drag mother, our queen of it all, RuPaul. Considered to be the mother of all drag queens bringing drag into mainstream pop culture. One of the most famous and influential drag queens in her story. Uh, the, you said drag queen. I'm not just drag queen. I am THE drag queen. <laughs> For RuPaul rose to fame with his single Supermodel. Yeah. 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 RuPaul has paved the way for upcoming drag queens. Not to mention that RuPaul's looks are to die for. They're everything. In 2009, RuPaul's Drag Race came into our lives and showed us that drag queens are all about fashion. and dressing up skills are extraordinary and need to be respected. Nowadays, they have won their spot as top influencers in pop culture and fashion, teaching us how to sew, how to dress, how to do our makeup, how to walk. Violet Tchotchke. Looking smart uh, and uh, tartan. Getting a reveal. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. oh. 
do everything. And this weekend RuPaul is hosting DragCon, the ultimate drag queen fan festival. It is a three-day event in LA with performances and panels by Drag Race stars where fans can interact with their favorite queens. I know I'll be there. Are you going? Will I see you there? Quick disclaimer, I'm obviously not a drag queen. I'm just a huge, huge fan of their work. These were all facts based on my own personal research. If you'd like to know more about what drag queen life is like, there are amazing queens on YouTube that can give you all the details you need to know. I think you should do first is cut the tape because there's nothing harder than holding one ball back and one ball up and scissors and a cigarette in your mouth. So do you think drag queens are too much for you to handle? Oh, no, it's too much, I can't take it. <laughs> just enough. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this drag her story. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!